Hey guys, how are you doing? <clears throat> Hallelujah for a new week. Praise the Lord for a new week. Hey Tiffany, how are you doing? How are you? We still got to get together. Happy new week. Happy new week. Hey Chastity. Chastity in the building. How are you? I love you sister. Amen. We're going to wait a couple more seconds and then we are going to get on. We're going to start. <clears throat> We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. So get your pen and your paper. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yep. Um, we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40 again. But we're going to be, well, not again because, well, again for some of us. But, yeah, no. Um, hey, Miss Brown, how are you doing, Delisa? We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40. Welcome, welcome to a new week. Thank you, Chastity. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to do some praying tonight. It is going to be good. So we're going to wait like two more seconds. And then we're going to get started because the replay plays just like the real thing. Hey, Brandy, how are you doing today? How are you doing? I was praying for you the other day. I was praying for you the other day. Welcome to a new week. Hey, Carlisle, Mr. Carlisle, how are you doing in the building? I love you, man of God. I love you. Hey, India, how are you doing? We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. We're not going to be on super long, so I'm going to just get started here in like two seconds. So get your pen and your paper <clears throat> and let me know that you are ready to go. Isaiah chapter 40. Um, we're going to be in. Hey, Marsha, how are you doing? Hey. We're going to start around verse 12. I'm going to hop around a little bit. I want to talk about the character and the nature of God. So get your pen and your paper. Um, perhaps you will get some new things to ponder and pray. Ponder and pray. And then when you pray about it, ponder on it some more. And then when you ponder on it some more, pray about it some more. Okay? Amen. So we're just we're going to get started. I'm not going to wait around because hallelujah. Amen. So let me know when you get your pen, your paper, and your Bible, Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to pray. Hey, Tega, 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 how are you doing, sister? I got to put up your shirt. I, I, I know. I know. I know. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hallelujah. I love you, sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, God, for what you will speak and what you will decree and what you will say. We bless you, God, because this space belongs to you. This wall belongs to you. This group belongs to you. And these are your people. <laughs> these are your people. And so, Father, we are anticipating for what you will pour out and what you will say. We are, as always, we are grateful, God, every opportunity that we have to come together corporately, every opportunity we have to come together and to hear what thus saith the Lord, and then to pray it, and then to prophesy, it, and then to decree it. And so, God, today is no different. We forget those things which are behind us. We we forget those things that are pressing at us. We forget those things that are screaming at us. We, in this moment, we lay everything down at your feet and we bless you, King of glory, that you are speaking. And so God is an intercessor as their intercessor. I'm asking you tonight, if you would speak something, I'm asking you tonight, God, if you would say something and that that thing would rest so heavily on the ears, on the hearer, God, and that the what they hear, it would cause them to become doers. They would cause, it would cause a shift that would be immediate. God, I believe in the word suddenly. I believe in immediate. I believe in the self-same hour and so king of glory because your nature is unchangeable because you are God you are the same yesterday today and forevermore you are the ancient of days who was an ever present help hallelujah you are the ancient of days who is always with us the good shepherd you are the ancient of days hallelujah our king of glory you are the ancient of days who's all knowing you're everywhere at the same time the bible says in Isaiah chapter 40 that you take both your hands and you scoop up the ocean you scoop up the sea and so God that's where we rest tonight. That's where we sit tonight. And so, God, I thank you that your sturdiness, thank you, Holy Spirit, your sturdiness is resting upon this room. Your sturdiness tonight, God, we can feel your stability. And so, Father, if there's anybody on here that was watching right now who will watch the replay, who feels unsturdy, who feels instability, we bless you, King of glory, that right now in the name of Jesus, that your stability of your character, the stability of the name of Jesus, the stability of the way 
days, the stability of the word of the Lord, heaven and earth will pass away. Everything has an expiration date but your word. Everything has an expiration date but your character. Everything has an expiration date, God. Everything has an expiration date but you. And so, King of glory, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you that your sturdiness and that your stability is here. God, we're so crazy to believe that you're pouring out healing even right now. We're so crazy to believe that you're pouring out wholeness even right now. We're crazy to believe that you are walking amongst us as we prepare a highway for you in worship and in prayer. And that you are handing out the touch of heaven. You are handing out the breeze of heaven that we're meeting with you the same way that you met with Adam in the cool of the day. And so King of glory, we don't look at us, but we look at you. King of glory, we don't look to us, we look to you. And so tonight is no different. Thank you, God, that you are speaking and that you are shifting us into this week in the name and in the blood of Jesus. Now, God, I'm going to pray into every miracle sign and every wonder that is available for your people this week. We're going to pray it before we even you know, go into the teaching, just receive it, just receive it. God has some things that he wants to pour into your hands. God has some things that he wants to put, place and bestow upon you. And it is a miracle. Now, while we don't move from miracle to miracle, manna to manna, there are seasons where there are, they are miracle seasons. There are seasons where it is the inexplainable. It is a season where God is shifting us and he's moving us. And in the shifting and the moving, he has to sustain us. And so father, in the name of Jesus, where there are miracles to be had in the hands of your people, the unexplainable. The man could not have done this. This has to be God. There is no other word but the name of God. That's that's the only thing that could explain it. We pray into that for this week in the name and in the blood of Jesus. We set expectation. Hallelujah. We set expectation upon every evolution of cycles of the 24 hour periods. We say and decree that even while we are sleeping, there is an expectation to meet with you. Even while we are dreaming, there is an expectation to meet with you. There is an expectation of, of revelation. There is an expectation of glory information. There is an expectation, God, that we are going to roll so deep in the depths of your presence and we are going to come out at the end of this 24 hour cycles in seven days and we are going to be changed. That there is an expectation that we are going from glory to glory and from faith to faith and from strength to strength according to what it means to you God when you put it in your word when you spoke it. Hallelujah. And so if anybody is struggling with hope, if anybody is struggling in faith, we decree and declare tonight that we can uh, we can smell water. At the scent of water, there is hope for a tree. And so we say tonight we smell water. We say tonight we there is the scent of water. We say tonight there is the scent of hope. We decree and declare that it is improper and unlawful for we to be a hopeless people. While we have yet breath in our body, there is still hope. While there is life in us. We still have hope. And so we eradicate hopelessness. We eradicate faithlessness. And so God, as an intercessor tonight in the name of Jesus, we say, I say for your people, God, help our unbelief where unbelief is coming alongside to compete against our belief. Oh God, help our unbelief with the blood of Jesus. Help our unbelief. Could the mind of Jesus help our unbelief? Could there be a paradigm shifting in your presence in the name of Jesus? We can't do it. We can't shift ourselves. We can't make ourselves. God, it has to be you. And so where there is unbelief hiding, where there is unbelief crouching, where there is unbelief attacking, Attacking. Oh God, would you flex your mighty right arm? Oh God, would you flex your mighty right arm? Oh God, would you flex your mighty right arm in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Where there needs to be justice happening for your people this week. Where the judgment of God in the favor of your people. Tonight, God, we receive the justice of the Lord. Where you are, I need you to say it. I receive the justice of the Lord. I receive the justice. I receive the judgments that will be in my favor. Not only do I have favor, but there is justice and judgments that will be in my favor. I am not only walking in favor, but I have the degree of heaven and they are in my favor in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And so where there are some things that shouldn't be happening, where there are some things that shouldn't be going your way, there is a judgment, says God. There is justice, says God, that belongs to you. So I'm going to pray into it. And so, God, I pray into the thousand generational blessing. Come on, guys. The thousandth generational blessing. On down to the thousandth generations, you bless us. And so, God, where we have not seen that generational blessing come to the thousandth generation, we we begin to pray into it tonight for the release of justice, for the release of judgment, of the blessing and the favor of your people in the name of Jesus. You are God and you don't change. You are God and you don't change. You are God and your word doesn't change. You are God and your character doesn't change. You are God, hallelujah, come on guys, and your covenant doesn't change. You are God, you don't change. And so we pray into your unchanging nature. We pray into your unchanging name. We pray into your unchanging desires for us in the name of Jesus. We pray into it tonight in Jesus name hallelujah I got happy hallelujah and so God we just bless you and we just honor you sometimes guys you got to get the corporate expectation up where we are thinking God wants to do one thing God says if you have the faith corporately I will do yet another thing on top of the thing that you guys were expecting me to do let's have an Ephesians 3 and 20 moment now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all 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 collectively all all corporately that we could ask, that we could imagine, that we could think of. Come on, guys. The corporate anointing, let's pull on God. The corporate prayer, let's pull on God. The corporate expectation, let's pull on God tonight in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. What if we said in the realm of the spirit, we had all things in common? What if we said in the place of prayer, we had all things in common? Come here, Acts chapter 2, church, and first in the natural and then in the spirit. Come on, guys. What if we said all and one? What if it was one for all? What if we said tonight we have all things in common? What if we said tonight that if one gets healing, we all get healing? Because that's the thing about God. If we have faith for it, he's not the God of the one, but he is the God of the all. And so what if we said we had all things in common? Hallelujah. What if we believed we had all things in common? What if we reached up and grabbed hold of what God was pouring out and said it was for all of us? What if we believed that tonight? What if we believed in the character of God tonight? What if we believed in the nature of God tonight corporately in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. And so King of glory, Lord of hosts, we know that you're already here. We don't have to say, oh God, oh God, come here. We don't have to say, oh God, oh God, we welcome you in. You said if two or three of us are gathered together in your name. And here's the thing, God, it's all for you. It's all about you. This is all about you. We are gathered together, all of us in your name, for your name, by your name, in the name. Hallelujah of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40. <laughs> we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just bless God. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Get your faith up. Get your expectation up. God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And listen, listen, if you have written down what God said at the beginning of 2019 and it looks like none of it has come to pass, it looks like it is moving slowly, listen, wait for it. It is not tarrying. It is going to come to pass. And the more and the closer and closer you get to the end of 2019, it means that the quicker and quicker God is going to do it. It means that it's going to be more powerful. It means it's going to be explosive. Said. Hallelujah. It means that God's going to burst forth for you. It means God's going to break through for you. It means God is going to explode for you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. All right. We're in Isaiah chapter 40. We're in Isaiah chapter 40. Hallelujah. So this is the summer to remember. So this is the summer of identity. But really, I pray that over the summer, as it's coming to an end, that we have seen, that we are seeing the identity of the Father unfolding. We find our identity. I am because of I am, if this makes sense. I am, I, 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 I am because I am. His name is I am, right? And so we cannot find identity outside of God. And so that's what the enemy has been warring with us for so long. And we see this with Jesus. When the enemy 
enemy comes to fight against his identity in the uh, in the desert when he was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of Satan. Come on, guys. He was messing with, he was trying to mess with Jesus' identity. And what did Jesus do? He defaulted to the I am. He said it is written. He said it is written. Listen, he defaulted to the I am. And so I am, I, I cannot be, I cannot exist. I cannot be I am without the I am. And so this summer, we are moving away from looking at us. We're moving away. Yes, while we have responsibility, and yes, while there is accountability to obedience, the responsibility for us becoming is with him. The responsibility of becoming it lies with him. And so this summer of identity has been about charging into the identity of the father the identity of the father and so when we understand that when God speaks and what God has spoken concerning you that it's not changing that this is the 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 mind of God this is the desire of God that he wants this more than you want it it changes everything it becomes a game changer when you understand that God is pressing you to pray something because he wants to answer it a particular type of way it really is a game changer when you begin to go through and you understand I, 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 we taught about this at refuge and this is same chapter but we want to land with something different that in, in in verse chapter two when it says your warfare has ended when it says your warfare has ended in hebrew the word warfare means appointed affliction that means appointed affliction and so when we look at this it, it, it also has the idea on the inside of it that that is consecrated in Hebrew it's consecrated and so if it's appointed and it's consecrated then that means that it's set apart come here Joseph when you're in the pit God is saying this is consecrated God's saying that this pit has been set apart for my use and come here Joseph in, in Potiphar he's saying wait a minute this whole house is consecrated this whole house is consecrated. And I know they call you slave, but I call you son. And I call this place consecrated because we're going somewhere. Because I'm taking you somewhere. So this is a controlled environment. Everything that happens to you here is under my control. Do you not understand and do you not see, says God, that I'm pushing them. I'm pushing them to do something because I need to push you out. And you need to go into your next controlled environment. Come on, guys. And so I understand that in my consecrated affliction, I am free. In my consecrated affliction, I am on purpose. In my consecrated affliction, I am in, co in, in covenant. I am in consecration. And so, listen, it's a game changer when we begin to acknowledge how the mind of God works. It is, it is a game changer when we begin to acknowledge how the character of God works. Maya Angelou, we say this all the time. When somebody tells you who they are, believe them well so it is with God when he tells you who he is believe him and so we've got to come out of this place where we're trying to make God move how we want him to move where we've got to take him at his word and when he says this is who I am we should believe it Come on, guys. We talk about that, you know, with, in the bad sense, right? When somebody is a liar and they say this is who they are, then we got to believe them. And God is saying, listen, it's a principle. I have told you who I am. Now believe me. Don't go back and forth. Do not put me on the scale with you. Do you not understand? I'm more weightier than you. Me and you cannot be on the same scales. I am the glory. And a lot of times what we want to do is we want to take God and we want to weigh his word with our character. His word outweighs, outlasts, overcomes us every single time. And so he's saying, when I tell you who I am, believe me. Believe me. And so anyway, I didn't got happy. Let me calm down, Jesus. Anyway, so this summer to remember has been, or the summer of identity has really, is, it's all about taking God. He's, listen, this is who he said he is. So it doesn't not it really doesn't matter what I'm not and who I'm not right now because he is. And so in the he is in the I am of God, that's where the editing of who I am or what I am becomes. I become in him. I become in him. And so I struggle in myself when I'm trying to become in myself, but I come at ease when I just get intertwined with him. This is making sense. Anyway, that's not where we're going to be at today. So we're in Isaiah chapter 40. That was free. And that was free. And we're going to go down to verse 12. We're going to go down to, we're going to look at three character traits of God. We're going to look at three character traits of God. And he, listen, 
God just, is, just doesn't give you his name. God just doesn't give you his word. He's giving you his character. He's giving you something to hold on to because it doesn't change. So we're going to talk about three things, three characteristics of God that you need to hold on to in your prayer time. We were talking about three characteristics characteristics of God that you need to hold on to in your decrees, right? You need to hold on to. So God gives us him, which is the eternal, right? And we, we take the eternal and we apply the eternal to our internal and we apply the eternal to our external. Instead of taking the external into the eternal as if the external is more powerful than the eternal. God is saying, no, I need you to take me. I need you to take my character. I need you to take my ways. I need you to take my word. I need you to take my nature. And that's what you move in. That's the power that you move in. You don't have to create power. You ain't got to make up power. The, he says, listen, I have given you the power to create. I give you the power. What does the power come from him? So I give you me to create. I give you my mind to create wealth. I give you, I give you. So you're not making anything up. So tonight, right now, where you are, I need you to shake off. I need you to shake off the fallacy. I need you to shake off the deception that you should be more than what you are. When the enemy comes, when you look and you begin to compare that I should be different than how I am, that I should be more than, than what I am, that I, I should be in a different place than where I am. No, no, no. I am in him and that is, and I am good. I am in him so I am well. I am in him so I am enough. Shake it off. Shake off the deception that is not your fight. Your fight is not your identity. Come here, Jesus, in the wilderness. He did not go back and forth with Satan about his identity. We got to do and say what we see Jesus do and say. Jesus did not, did not say, do you know who I am? Do you not know that I am the son of God? Do you not know? Do you not know? He did not do that. He said, it is written. He said, it is written. I ain't even going to engage you with this because I ain't even got to go here because what I'm rolling with is so solid. It's so solidified. Next, moving on. Let's move on to the things that we really are warring in. The things that God has called you to war in and to war with is with people and not with you. It's not with you. It's not on the inside of you. Your war is not internal. Your war is out there. You're warring against the things that are out there that are causing people to be blind, that are causing people not to be able to see. Your war is out there, but the enemy wants you to get caught up in here so you'll never move out there. And God is saying, if you let me, I'm going to flow the eternal into your internal so that you will be empowered to move in the external. You will will be ready to move. You will be ready to march. You will get out of your head. Come on, guys. You will get out of your head and you will begin walking out there. God did not, did not design us to always be in this war with our identity. It is written. I ain't got to flash my badge. I am flashing the badge of Jehovah. I ain't, I, I ain't got a badge to flash, right? I'm an ambassador sent. I'm a magistrate sent. I, and so the one who sent me is the one backing me. Let me move so you can see him. Let me get out the way so he can come through. Let me duck down so he can show himself if this is making sense. So I just need you to shake yourself. I just need you to shake yourself. Where you have been going back and forth, where you've been fighting with low self-esteem, where you've been fighting with inadequacies, when you've been fighting with showing up, when you've been fighting about coming out of yourself, when people have called you an introvert. No, you are not an introvert. You're not an extrovert. You're an eternal bird. I just made that up. You are an eternal bird. You, whatever, however God wants you to show up, however God has called you to be, we rip the labels off of you tonight. The only label that exists upon you is the God definition that he has put upon you. The only label that exists upon your life is the God label that is upon your life. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we shake ourselves in your presence. Rip off the labels, Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. The labels, the labels, the labels, even the things that we uh, agree when we said, yes, I, I'm an introvert. Yes, I, I'm shy. Yet, no, no, I have the character of the eternal. Whatever God wants me to do, so it is, so be it unto me according to his word. And that said, I'm an eternal vert. That's what I am. The nature of God. The nature of God is my true nature. The nature of Jesus is my true nature. The mind of Jesus is my I'm not going back and forth. I'm not fighting anymore when it comes to my identity. Shake yourself in the presence of the Lord. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Jesus. All right. So we're in verse 12. So we're going to look at three characteristics of your God. I will be your God and you will be my people. He says that over and over and over. Why? Because when he says that, he's saying, if I am your God and you are my people, then you have rights and access. You have rights and access. You have rights and access. Not only as citizens, right? Not only as citizens, but as sons. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. You have rights and access, Jesus. Rights and access, okay? So we're in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. I'm reading this out of the message version. Who has scooped up the ocean in his two hands? Who has measured the sky between his thumb and little finger? I need you to get that picture. He's measuring the sky like this. This is, this is him measuring the sky. We, we, we cannot see all of the sky in one sitting. We can't see a fourth of the sky in one sitting. He's doing this. He's measuring the sky. He's measuring the whole sky. He, he takes both of his hands and he scoops up. Scoops up the ocean. Who has put all of the earth's dirt into one basket? Weighed each mountain and hill. Who could have ever told God what to do or taught him his business? What expert would he have gone to for advice? What school would he attend to learn justice? What God do you suppose might have taught him what he knows, showed him how things work, why the nations are but a drop in the bucket, a mere smudge on a window? Watch him sweep up the islands like so much dust off the floor. There aren't enough trees. I need you, I need you to, if you're not in the message version, I need you to listen to this. There aren't enough trees in Lebanon, nor enough animals in the forest to furnish adequate fuel or offerings for his worship. You can't do this on your own. This is what he's saying. Remember, when we talk about offerings and we talk about atonement, we're talking about man having to do something trying to be in right standing with God, having to work, trying to be in it, trying to stay in his presence. And so he's given us Jesus, but he's painting this picture here in, by, through, uh, to Isaiah. And he's saying, listen, there's not enough animals and there's not enough trees to give me a for real adequate offering. You can't do it. This is so good. All the nations add up to simply nothing before him. Less than nothing is more like it. A minus. So who even comes close to being like God? To whom or what can you compare him? Some know God, an idol, ridiculous. It's made in a workshop, cast in bronze, given a thin veneer of gold and draped with silver filigree. Or perhaps someone will select a fine wood, an olive wood, and say that it won't rot. Then hire a wood carver to make a no God, giving special care to its base so it won't tip over. Have you been paying attention? Have you not been listening? Have you, have you heard, haven't you heard all these stories all your life? Don't you understand the foundation of all things? God sits high above the round ball of the earth. The people look like ants. He stretches out the skies like a canvas. Yes, like a tent canvas to live under. He ignores what all the princes say and do. The rulers of the earth, the systems of the earth, the constructs of the earth, the high people of the earth, the people who are put in positions in the earth, they count for nothing. This is your God. This is his character. Like seeds barely rooted, just sprouted, they shrivel when God blows upon them. Messages of comfort. 
when God uh, blows on them like flecks of chaff, they're gone into the wind. So who is like me, who holds a candle to me, says the holy. Look at the night skies. Who do you think made all this? Who marches this army of stars out each night, counts them off, calls them each by name, so magnificent, so powerful, and never overlooks a single one. We're going to stop right there for right now. We're going to look at three characteristics that you have to hold on to in this next season for the rest of your life. You got to hold on to the character of God. That's what we pray with. That's what we march with. That's what we work with. That's what we worship with. Not our character. It's not our goodness. It's not our holiness, right? The gifts and the callings come without repentance to him. What he's put in us, this treasure that he has in earthen vessel, he pulls it out by his character. So when I move in prayer and when I move in the earth with the answers to prayer, I am moving with the character of God. I pray y'all see this. I'm moving with the character of God. The first characteristic that we're going to look at, and I'm going to give you the synonym. So if you're taking notes, the synonyms, when I say the synonyms, the synonyms that stick out to you, write them down because these are, this, this is what you will war with. This is what you will pray with. This is what you will say it is written with. The immutable, that's the first one, the immutable character of God. Immutable. The definition means unchanging over time and unable to be changed. Unchanging over time and unable to be changed. It is impossible for God to change. It is impossible for God to change his nature. It's impossible. So when we look at this word unchangeable, or immutable, it means unchangeable, fixed, set. The character of God is rigid. The character of God, which are the attributes of his word. The word is backed by his character. So like the dollar is backed by gold, the word is backed by his character. So his word, like his character, becomes rigid. His word, like his character, becomes inflexible. It's unyielding, it's unbending, it's permanent. It's, 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 it says here, well established, it's eternally established. The word of the Lord concerning you is eternally established. The word of the Lord concerning you is eternally established. The thoughts of God, which is the word of the Lord concerning you is eternally established. It is unshakable. It is unshakable. He is unshakable. The character of God is unshakable. And so when the enemy comes to shake you, you got to take the character of who he is and say, no, I am in him. I am holding on to him and he cannot be shaken. It is impossible for God to be shaken. It is impossible for the word of the Lord to be shaken. So if he can't be shaken and I am in him, then therefore I cannot be shaken. It is written, I cannot be shaken. He is immutable. He is unvarying. He is perpetual. He is enduring. He is eradicable. He is changeless. He is undeviating. God does not deviate. God's mind is made up. God's word is set in the heavens. That's what the Bible says. The meaning concerning you is set in the heavens. And so if it's set in the heavens, it is set in the earth. The treasure of heaven that is on the inside of you, it is set in your members. It is established in your bones. It is established in your mind. And so when you hold on to this establishment, you cannot be moved. You will be established. You will be unyielding. Do y'all see? This is how we become like him. We will never be him. We will never be as him. We are like him in the earth realm. I pray y'all see this. And so when I begin to look to him, when I set my face and say, okay, I've got a model and I've got a mimic. This is the picture that I roll in. Then that's when you can say, when everything out here in the external 
Israel is moving and swaying and moving and swaying, you will stand like flint. You will be like a mountain. You will be unshakable. You will be immovable because the unshakable, immovable character of God and word of the Lord is in you. He is entrenched, persistent. The word of the Lord is persistent concerning you. The character of God is persistent concerning you. And so when you feel like things are not working, when you feel like God is not speaking, oh no, the word of the Lord is persistent concerning you. The thoughts of God are persistent concerning you. One after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. They never stop coming. God's thoughts towards you never stop coming. The the Bible says that his thoughts towards you are innumerable. Why? Because they never stop coming. They come one after the other after the other. And so when the enemy comes in and he's saying to you that you're by yourself, God has forgotten you. How can God forget me when one thought concerning me comes after one after the other after the other? The immutable nature of God. The ability of God to not be divided. He cannot be changed. He does not morph into anything. He is sturdy and he is stable. What you see about him then is what you will see about him now and what you will see about him in the future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's why we can say we have all things in common. That's why we can say when you run up on a healing, when God brings it by you on purpose, everything concerning you is on purpose. God is a very detailed God. God is a God of purpose. God does nothing and it is wasted. Every moment of your day is not wasted before God. Everything that comes in your path, God did it on purpose. Nothing is coincidental. Nothing is wasted. And so when God brings somebody by you with the testimony of healing, he's saying, do you not see? I am the healer. I am the same God who healed them and I am with you. I am the same God who healed them and I am in you. I am the same God who healed them and I have already healed you. I am immutable. Hallelujah. And so when you're praying, when, when things are going on and you're looking and you can see everything's moving and swaying, you've got to hold on to God is immutable. It's impossible. It is impossible for the word of the Lord to change. He is no respecter of persons. And so when I'm looking in the scripture and I see what he did for one, I understand that when he did it for, when he did it for them, he had already done it for me. Immutable. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Did y'all get that? Do y'all need me to say those synonyms again? I don't want to get go too fast. Let me know. All right, the second one is indisputable. So we have immutable and then we have indisputable. Indisputable. Indisputable means unable to be challenged. Unable to be challenged. Unable to be challenged and unable to be denied. Indisputable. Unable to be challenged and unable to be denied. Synonyms, incontestable, inconvertible, undeniable, irrefutable, unassailable, beyond dispute, beyond dispute, unquestionable, unquestionable. Notice how the enemy will come and question you and twist things so that you will begin to question what you think you heard. Because listen, when I understand that the nature of God, the character God of God and the word of, the, of God, it is unquestionable and it is undeniable. So when I make up my mind that he has already made up my mind, did y'all catch that? All I need to do is make up my mind that he made up his mind. All you need to do is make up your mind that he made up his mind. And so what his mind is made up about, it is indisputable. It cannot be disputed. It cannot be challenged and it cannot be denied. When you make up your mind that he has made up his mind, when you make up your mind, that God has made up his mind about who you are and what you are and what you're supposed to do. When you understand that God made up his mind before he released you on this side of glory, knowing everything that you would do when he still said release. 
When you make up your mind that he's made up his mind about what he said to you and his mind is not changing. When you make up your mind that he's made up his mind and nothing can challenge what he's made up his mind concerning you about. I pray y'all are getting this. I pray y'all are seeing this. Undebatable, unanswerable, inarguable. And so all we're doing is making up our mind about the character of God. When you make up your mind and say, listen, God is immutable. When you make up your mind and you say, listen, God and this word is indisputable. When was the last time you or have you ever pulled out the prophetic word over your life, plucked it down in front of you and said, this is indisputable. When was the last time you opened up your word, you read your word and you said, this is indisputable. God cannot be denied according to what he said. God cannot be challenged concerning this thing. When was the last time? You pulled out your prayer journal and God had spoke to you or you pulled out your dream journal and God had said some things in your dream and you plumped it down on front of you and you said, listen, this is indisputable. This is immutable because the nature of God is here. The character of God is here. The word of the Lord is here and it cannot be changed. It cannot be challenged. It cannot be denied. When was the last time you did it? Hallelujah. And if you've never done it, I challenge you right now for you to say the word over my life, the word over my kids, the word over my lineage, the word concerning what we are to do, the word concerning who we are. It is indisputable. It cannot be challenged. It cannot be denied because it's backed by the name of God. It's backed by the person of Jesus. It is backed by the glory of who he is. When was the last time? Hallelujah. You said I'm making up my mind. Hallelujah. I pray y'all see this. I pray y'all see this. My mind is made up that his mind is made up. My mind is made up that his mind is made up. I'm not going to question God if this is his mind. If you know that you know that God has said something, if you're struggling with the prophetic word, find the prophetic word in the scripture. You cannot wrestle with the scripture. Find it in the scripture and then say about the scripture, this thing cannot be changed. It is immutable. Hallelujah. And so listen, if you ever in your time have said, you know, well, there's errors in the Bible and, you know, um, you know, there's context and, you know, there's this and that. And, you know, the Bible is not necessarily, uh, you know, all the way to repent and repent quickly. Repent and repent quickly. Listen, if he is God, he understood who was going to interpret the Bible. He already knew what was going to happen. And so he built into it a solution. And he's saying, all you got to do is trust me that I already knew what you think you know. <laughs> and I already, I already made a solution for that. I am God. Everything that looks like a loophole, you got to already understand. God says, I've already filled it in. I've already, before the foundation of the world was ever laid, it was already finished with the plan for redemption. The plan for redemption was already in place before man ever sinned. The plan for redemption was already fulfilled before man ever sinned. The plan for redemption was already completed before man ever sinned. Come on, guys. The immutable character of God. Jesus, the indisputable. And so this is what you're carrying in prayer. I'm giving you three characteristics of God. Um, this is powerful because a lot of times in prayer, we'll pray the word, but we'll try to separate the word from the character and nature of God. The word of God is backed by who he is. He spoke the word. And so the one who spoke it is the one who has already fulfilled it and already performed it. This is the indisputable. And so when you show up and man says no. When you're going through something and, and, and the construct says, no, we just read that. He says, the, the kings of the earth, the princes in the earth, he, he ignores them. And so when the kings in the earth, I pray y'all hear this. When, when systems are saying no, when systems are saying we're going to lock you out, when systems are saying you, you don't belong here, when things are saying, no, 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 we can't let you at this table. God says, well, 
I, I, that, that doesn't matter to me because what I've already made up my mind concerning you, if I've said yes, then it's yes. And so that's what you take into the presence of the Lord. That's what you worship with. You worship with the immutable character of God. You worship with the sight of the Father, with the word, with the character of God that cannot be denied. That's what you move with. You say, wait a second. I have the character of God. I've made up my mind that God doesn't change. I've made up my mind that the word of the Lord cannot be challenged. And so for every place that the word of the Lord is being challenged, shut it down. Shut it down. Every place where the word of the Lord is being everything that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, shut it down. When you make up your mind, the power of a made-up mind. Will you make up your mind? Wait a second. This cannot be challenged. Wait a second. This cannot be challenged. And so, God, I have made up my mind. If you have said this, even though I may have to go through a process, if you said this, even if it doesn't you know, pan out how I see it, if you've said this, and that brings us to our third one, the innumerability, innumerable, innumerable, Jesus, too many to be counted. Too many to be counted. Innumerable. Innumerable. Sand of the beach. Innumerable. That's how many ways God can bless you. Innumerable. Innumerable. God can absolutely do anything. Anywhere, with anyone, at any time. Innumerable. God, in his ways, cannot be counted, cannot be put in a box, cannot be, you know, uh, uh, forecasted, because how many ways he has to bless you, it is beyond you. And so when we're in prayer and, and, and we're in, in, in making our declarations, we've got to be careful. We've got to say, I've got the character of God. And I understand that the ways whereby which he can be him is innumerable. And so when the enemy comes at you and he say, well, he's not going to do it like that. What, what, you know, he, he, it's not going to happen for you like that. So what? So what? Just because one way shuts down, there is an innumerable more ways that it's, it can happen. God can, if he can make the sun stand still for Joshua, come on guys. If he can make the wall of Jericho fall down flat. If he can part the Red Sea, come on guys. If he can take five, uh, three fish and five loaves, was that it? three fish? No, two fish, two fish, that's eight. No, two fish and five loaves and he can feed 5,000, come on guys. And there were 12 baskets left. Innumerable. Innumerable. And so you've got to get that into your vocabulary when it comes to how God watches over you. You've got to take God out of our man-made box. We've got to take God off of our man-made schedule. We've got, God is not governed or, and not constrained by anything that we're governed by or constrained. And so now you've got to take your life where he is and you've got to say that your life is not governed or constrained but what, by what man knows it to be governed and by constrained. Your life is governed and constrained by the supernatural. Innumerable. Innumerable. This is something you've got to put into your vocabulary. This word is, is the character of God. It is the ways of God. There are an innumerable ways God can do this thing. God has not told me how he's going to do it. And so God, whichever way, you, if you want to do two or three of these, if you want to make it happen five or six times, it's innumerable how you can do this. It's innumerable how this can happen. It's innumerable how many solutions that there are. I can't even count all, of the, all the ways you can make this thing happen. Are y'all seeing this? And so you have the immutability of God, innumerable ability of God. I made that up. I just made that up, right? And then the way of God that he cannot be challenged and he cannot be denied. God cannot be challenged and he cannot be denied. Indisputable. God cannot be, cha God cannot be challenged and God cannot be denied. You can be challenged and you can be denied. So defer. When we're talking about identity, get out of yourself and get into him. We've got to come to, I always say this, you've got to come to the end of your mind. You've got to loose 
your mind to get his mind. We cannot have two minds. I permit this mind. Allow this mind to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So I can't have two minds. I cannot be double-minded. Y'all seen this? I cannot be double-minded. And so when I try to hold on to my mind, when I try to hold on to my way, I become double-minded. Right? And so here, when I am holding on to all that he is, as much as my finite self can wrap myself around, when I just make a decision about who he is, who do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And so that's what prayer is. In this next season, in this next place, when you go to pray, let it be all up and down from beginning, middle, and end. Who do you say he is? Not who you are, not what you are, not what you got, not what you are. Who is he? And so the more time you spend in worship, the more he's going to open up who he is. When he tells you who he is, believe him. Hold on to that character. Hold on to that nature. Because you're going to see that if you're going to uh, where, where, where we were running and we were, you know, going around the same mountain, looking like a dog chasing its tail, when we just could not get it, you're going to see that you're getting ready to bulldoze your way through some issues. What was bothering you, what was coming against you, you're getting ready to bulldoze your way right through them when you make up your mind, when you make a decision about the character and the nature of God. Who do you say that he is? How do you say that he is? What do you say that he is? Not you. Not you. He is immutable. He don't change. He don't change. And so his original thoughts concerning you, they never changed, Jesus. What he created you to be, it ain't never changed. In the midst of where you've been, in the midst of what you've done, in the midst of what you haven't done, God says, I, there was only one plan, there's only one creation, there's only one ideology concerning you, and it never changed. It never changed. It never changed. When you thought you lost time, when you thought that you lost momentum, God is saying it never changed. God says, do you not understand I built in a remedy? Do you not understand if you hold on to my nature, if you understand my character, if you make a decision about who I am, that you will understand that you are in the right place right now. That you are in the mature place right now. That you are in the perfect place right now. Because God says I have a way of arranging things. Because time, I'm not governed by time. Time means nothing to him. And so when we're dragging and lagging, when we're feeling some kind of way, God is saying shake yourself and get into me. Do you not understand that my original plan towards you still stands? It still stands. It still stands. My original thoughts towards you, my original creation concerning you, it still stands. What I call you, it still stands. How I know you before he released us, before I formed you, I knew you. How I know you, it still stands. Nothing has changed, says the Lord. Nothing has changed, says the Lord, because I knew what was going to happen. I foreknew, I foreknew, I foreknew, and I still knew you, and nothing has changed, says God. Nothing has changed. You're right where you're supposed to be. You're right on track. It's the immutable nature of God that you can stand in the face of your adversity and say, it is well, it is good, I'm on track. I'm right where God intended me to be. It may not be where I think I should be, but while I am in the intentions of God, that's the most powerful place I can be, it is well. It is well, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And so, God, where people are even feeling like, you know what? I thought I would be further. I thought this wasn't supposed to happen. I took another hit, and then I took another hit, and then I took another hit. And God is saying, no, those hits, don't you understand? Come here, Joseph, that pit, that Potiphar's house, it was all me. It was a controlled environment. It was consecrated. It was consecrated. It was consecrated because I was building you to get to this place. Because this next place that I, your soles of your feet shall tread upon, you need to be in a certain momentum, a certain character. And so God says, I I took you through those things. I, I use those places that you would uh, pre-adventure and I'm using them for our good, says God. Because you work with me, I work with you to fulfill this thing called your future. 
Hallelujah. And so, Father, where people have been struggling with age, where people have been struggling with where they've been, where people have been struggling with their testimony, they're struggling. I thank you, Father, that right now that struggle has been broken off of them because they're saying the immutable character of God, it works for me in my favor. The immutable character of God is my favor. The immutable character of God works in my life. The immutable character of God works over my children. Hallelujah. For parenting, your kids have a word over their life and it looks like they're running amok and it looks like they're running crazy and you're feeling some kind of way. God says, get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings and get into my character. I already knew where they were going to go. I already knew what was going to, I already knew, says God. And so I gave you, I gave you what to pray. I gave you insight as to what to pray, but you got to understand, I, I built my plan. I built this into my plan. Where they are, I, I built it into my plan. Come here, prodigal son. <laughs> Hallelujah. He still went. He still left home. He still squandered his money. He still lost everything. He still had to, was eating with the pigs in the pig pen. But God, the Bible says he came to himself. But God, he came to himself. And when he came back to his father, he was matured. When he came back to his father, he was a man. When he came back to his father, come on guys, when he came back to his father, so God said the pig pen was consecrated. It was dirty, but it was consecrated because he came to himself in a dirty place, but it was a consecrated place. He came to himself and said, let me go back to my father. Get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings. And God says, get into my care. The same way I foreknew you, I foreknew them. I knew exactly what was going to happen with them at 20 years old. I know exactly what's going to happen with them at 30 years old. I know exactly everything that's going on with them, says God. They're mine first. And since I'm indisputable, my will for them cannot be challenged. Come on. The prodigal son, he still left. He still squandered. He still lived wild. He still ended up in the pig pen. And then he came to himself. Because of the Lord. Come on, guys. And so, Father, I thank you that even right now, minds are shifting and minds are changing. Emotions are shifting and emotions are changing because the stability of your character, the stability of your word. God says, I gave you, some of you guys got a word about your child. While they were in the womb, I gave you words about your children when they were young. And you're saying to me, but God, you said, you said, you said, you said, you said, God said, yeah, I gave that to you to anchor your soul. I just need you to be okay. I need you to use that over your emotions. Don't talk to your kid like that. Don't, don't belittle them. Don't berate them, says the father. Take a lesson from the prodigal son's daddy. He gave it to him and he let him go because he knew he would be back. The Father says, I gave you the word to be an anchor for your soul. I got them. I have a plan for them outside of you. I have a plan for your children outside of you. I have a plan for your children outside of you. I have a covenant that I uh, for them outside of you. Consecrated, controlled environment. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that there are some parents on here that is getting liberated. There's some people on here that are married to some people and you're getting liberated. You're like, God, but you told me this person was going to be God in prayer. And God says, I know. Hang tight. Hang tight. You got, when you make up your mind that I am indisputable, when you make up your mind that the word I gave you cannot be challenged. But God, it looks like it's being challenged. God says, no, thank you, Holy Spirit. God says, no, it's not being challenged. You're just in a challenge. The process. It's not, being it's not being challenged. You're in a challenge. You're in a process. The word, the person is being processed by the word and in the word. But my word is not being challenged. Heaven and earth will pass away. Make up your mind. Did I say it or did I say it? Make up your mind. Make up your mind about what you say about me. Make up your mind about what you think about me, says God. Hallelujah. And so, Father, for the people on here who are standing in the place of, of covenant and blessing and crossing over into another place, and they're like, God, I've been crossing over for like five years now. 
I've been crossing into the land of milk and honey for like 10 years now. When am I going to cross in it to for real? I've been, I've been waiting on this answer. I've been waiting on this blessing that you said was supposed to come to me like decades ago. And I still feel like I'm waiting. The father is saying, no, you got to make up your mind about my, you, you can't put me in a box. You can't count the ways that I can do what it is that I'm doing. Take me out of the box and stop telling me how this has got to happen. Many of us, if we were with the children uh, of Israel with the walls of Jericho, we would have walked around the wall and we would have kicked it. We would have threw things at it. Because in our minds, there's no way that this wall is going to fall flat. There's no way that this wall, we're marching around the wall. How dumb is this? Every day we're getting up, walking around a wall in circles, in one circle. How dumb is this? All of us. And how, how crazy is this? How many of us would have done that? How many of us would have said, there's no, there's no reason to do this. Why am I even do the, doing this? This is dumb. This makes no sense. So we would have walked, we would have marched around the wall and we would have punched it. We would have kicked it. We would have threw stuff at it. We would have carried a tool in our pocket. And when nobody was, was looking, we would have been trying to knock it down because it, what God, what you're telling us to do, it doesn't make any sense. And God is saying, backtrack and repent for where, when, when you thought my back was turned, when you thought nobody could see you, you was doing things on your own strength because what I told you didn't make sense to you and it didn't feel good to you. And so that's what we're waiting on. I'm waiting on you to understand that what I've said to you cannot be denied. It cannot be challenged, but I ain't got to do it the way you want me to do it. I ain't got to do it the way you want me to do it. I ain't got to do it the way that you've heard it's been done. I, I am the Lord innumerable innumerable and so if you're facing some challenges you're, you've got to do some things you got to walk into some places and it's not looking good it's not looking good it looks like the constructs of the earth got you it looks like the systems of the earth are saying no it looks like the systems of man are saying no God is saying well I, I'm not governed by those things it's not you it's not your power it's not your might it's me. What do you say about me? And so, Father, I thank you that you put some people at ease tonight. I thank you, God, that this word is resting heavy on their souls. I thank you, God, that people are getting liberated even right now just from revelation. That's what revelation does. That's what the, the spirit of revelation, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He, that he causes us to be able to make some decisions uh, righteously. He, and, and when we do, things just begin to lift off of us and we begin to embrace life so much differently. We begin to embrace prayer and embrace God so differently. When we, you know, some of us, honestly, we've been accusing God low key. That he's not doing what he said he was going to do. He's not showing up like he said he's going to show up. In all your life, you had to fight. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. And God says you have no idea that Ephesians 3 and 20 cannot be denied over your life. You have no idea. You're getting ready to walk into your Ephesians 3 and 20. You're already walking in it. You're already living in it. But because it doesn't look the way you want it to look. God says, let that go. Let that go. And when you let that go, all of the disappointment is just going to lift off of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you guys have been rolling with disappointment so long. You've just been had one disappointment after one disappointment after one disappointment. And God says it only takes one moment to erase all of your disappointment. God says, I have a way. God says, I have a way. I pray you're listening. God says, I have a way. In one moment, I can erase all of your disappointment. Why? Because I can cause you to see it righteously. I can cause you to understand. Come here, Joseph. When he was talking to his brothers, he said, hey, I was disappointed. What you thought, but my mind's been changed because I see now. I get it. I get it. And so what you're saying is disappointment in 3.5 seconds, you're going to say, I wouldn't change a thing. Where I've been and what I had to handle and what I had to go through, I wouldn't change one thing. The sickness that I dealt with, the divorces, children running crazy, people leaving you for dead. You in 2.5 seconds, you're going to be like, I wouldn't change one thing, one thing, one thing. 
And so, Father, hashtag the best week ever. The summer to remember, the summer of identity. We're on purpose taking your character. And we're going to hold on for dear life. When we pray, it's not about the circumstance. It's about the God of the circumstance. It's about the God of the circumstance. And since you are his child, he is the God of all of your circumstances. There's not one circumstance in your life that God is not God. There's not one thing in your life that God is not God. Every secret addiction God is still in your life. And God is saying, if, if you would just tap into my character, if you would just make a decision about me, I have a way of editing you. I have a way of editing you. If you would just, if you would just make a decision about who I am, I can change who you are. And so you're going around going around in circles in the secret addiction, going around in the secret cycle. And listen, secret addictions is, uh, not have to do with just pornography, drugs. Secret addictions could be, you know, overeating, shame, emotional eating, low self-esteem. Some people don't cut themselves on their skin, but they cut themselves in their spirit. They're, they're cutters in the spirit. We'll never see a mark on you. We'll never see a mark on your body, but you cut yourself in the spirit. You look in the mirror and you hate yourself. You wish you were dead. And we can't see that. We can't see that. God says, if you, if you would just make a decision about who I am, God says, I can change who you are. So when I say secret addictions, let's not, well, I don't, I don't have any secret. I, I'm good. I don't do drugs. I'm, I'm not having sex. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm holy. Everybody's got something. All of us got a thorn. All of us got something. Every last one of us got something. And the father is saying some stuff you need, you should not have. Some things are not a part of your process. Some things are not a part of your process. God says it's time to loose it and let it go. When you hold on to me, you can loose it. Who do you say that I am? And so, Father, I thank you that this word is resting. I thank you that this word is settling, Father. I thank you, God, that you're showing us that your love for us. I'm going to read the end. I'm going to read the end. I read this, but I'm going to read it again because this is so beautiful. So beautiful. Isaiah chapter 40. If you have access to a message Bible, and we all do because it's free, it's a free app, or you could just Google it. I want you to screenshot this. I want you to screenshot this. And in moments where the enemy is fighting against your identity, where you want to relapse into anger and shame and all that craziness, I want you to um, screenshot verses 27 through 31 of Isaiah chapter 40 in the message version. Why would you ever complain, O oh Jacob, change and put your name there? Or whine, Israel, saying, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. The creator of all you can see or imagine, he doesn't get tired. He doesn't pause to catch his breath. He knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who are tired. Gives fresh strength to dropouts. If you dropped out, the father is saying, I'll give you fresh strength to get back in the game. Have you dropped out in your mind? Have you dropped out in some relationships? Have you dropped out with dreaming? Have you dropped out with having vision? Have you dropped out? God says tonight, I'm going to give you energy to get back in the game. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and they don't get tired. They walk and they don't lag behind. When he says, God doesn't care. God has lost track of me. God doesn't care what happens to me. In Hebrew, I mean, in King James Version, it says that the judgments have escaped God, that your judgment has escaped God. 
And the wording makes it seem like you're getting away with something, like you're doing something wrong and God's not judging you. But really what it means that the justice of God, that he's saying that the justice of God, what's due you, what God has promised you, it's not going to escape God. God doesn't get tired. God's not panting. God does not sleep. He doesn't sleep nor slumber. God is performing and God is perfecting. What he said he was going to perform in you and what he was said he was going to perfect in you and what he was going to perfect for you. God is coming for our disappointment. Yeah, God doesn't come, come and God doesn't go. God lasts. God's coming for your disappointment. God is confronting you right now and he's saying, do you want to be made whole? Because your disappointment is crippling you. And some of us got disappointment from our childhood. We got disappointment from broken relationships. We got disappointment and it's so deep and it's, I mean, it's so deep. It's so deep. It's so deep that when things begin to pop off for you in your favor, there's evil foreboding. I talk about this all the time. There's evil foreboding in the back of your mind because you've been disappointed so long. That disappointment is your default. And God says, well, we can't really move forward if your expectation is disappointment. We really can't move forward. We really can't move out of this place because that old disappointment can't go into this new place. Because God says, I'm going to blow your mind. Even though there's process and even though there's going to be hard times and even though there's going to be, you know, moments, that old disappointment cannot begin to fight against you in this new place. And so I want to pray for your disappointment tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If this is you and you're saying that you've been grossly disappointed, you've disappointed so many times and you can't even articulate your disappointment. You always, you, there's an air of disappointment that's over your life. You're really kind of disappointed with yourself. You're disappointed, you know, with where you are. You're disappointed with people in your life. Just disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. And you feel like you're the biggest disappointment in your life. And then God has disappointed you because God didn't make you better or God didn't give you this or God didn't take you there. I want to pray for you tonight. Type your name and I just want to pray for you. If you if you're bold enough and if you're not, the prayer still works. It still covers you. Type your name in. Because I believe that God is going to turn that disappointment around tonight. I believe that God is going to change your mind tonight about what you think you see. And the joy of the Lord is going to ease in the places of your soul. There's healing for your disappointment tonight. And sometimes that's what answer prayer is fighting against. When God says, I'm answering your prayer, but you let it go to hold on to the disappointment. Hallelujah. You hold on to the disappointment. And so tonight, I want you to release out of your hand the disappointment. And I want you to grab hold. I want you to receive, come on, the appointments of the Father. The appointments. The, appoint, the appointed thing. The appointed blessing. Come on, guys. The appointed covenant, the appointed word for every disappoint, disappointing moment. There is an appointment that was inside of that disappointing thing. Hallelujah. And so where you are, I just want you to kind of lift your hands. And I just kind of want you just to kind of just do this, this motion as if you're releasing it. Just do this as you're releasing it. Just like you're just releasing it, just letting it go. I just want you to kind of do this motion as a prophetic act. And I'm going to pray for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus. Right now in your presence, corporately, we are releasing our corporate disappointments. We are releasing even the disappointments that are embedded in our DNA and embedded in our lineage where disappointment has been handed to us. Where we were taught that we're going to be disappointed by life, where we were taught we were going to be disappointed because of our race, where we taught we were taught that we were going to be disappointed because of our gender, where we were taught that disappointment is just a is just a, the name of the game, and so we were born in disappointment, we were shaped in disappointment. Father, in the name of Jesus. We hold on to your character tonight and we believe, we decide that there is no real disappointment in you. There is process, but there is not disappointment. And where this disappointment has moved in and it has set up shop in the seats of our soul. And so now there's really fear of moving forward. There's fear of breakthrough because on the other side of breakthrough, it could be the same old thing. In this new place, it could be the same old story. Father, right now in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus, we take authority over that mindset in the earth. We receive the mind of Christ. We receive the, what is available because of your character. We receive 
the, the mind of you, the heart of you, God, that you have for each and every one of us, every person who typed their name in, I release, hallelujah, the, the mind of God, what God has for you right now, where God wants you to be right now, how God sees you right now. And here's the thing, God is not disappointed in your life. God is not disappointed with your life. God is not disappointed with who you are. God is not disappointed with where you are. God is not disappointed. And so I just decree over you that it is improper and it is unlawful for you to be out of order with God, for you to be separated in this decision with God. God's not disappointed, so you shouldn't be either. And so, Father, the joy, the, the joy that you have over your son or your daughter the joy that you have over the lives of the people who type their name in. I'm asking you, God, to allow this joy to settle upon these, your people, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, God, may your joy begin to seep into every seat of their soul that is disappointed, every memory that is riddled with disappointment. May the healing virtue called joy reach and flow over every seat of their soul, every memory, every place, every relationship. We decide tonight corporately that there is no disappointment in you. You are good God only. You are good God only. Only goodness is in you. Even when it's terrible, you turn it around for our good. Even when you process us, you turn it around for your glory. And so God made the glory that has been present that your people could not see that has been working in their lives. May it come upon every person who typed their name in, every person who said, God, this is me. God, I've been afraid to move forward because I've been so grossly disappointed. I've been afraid to arise in the prophetic world over my life. I've been afraid to march forward because God, I really don't know what's on the other side. And I really feel like, God, I can't not take another disappointment. I feel like I will die if I'm disappointed again. Thank you, Father, that tonight that's over. That ends. I thank you, Father, that there is a power, there is your dunamis that is settling upon your people right now and an excitement and a joy for what's next. And even for the places where we don't know what's next and we don't know what's what, what, what exactly all the details are, thank you, Father, for an excitement to be alive, an excitement to do the work, an excitement to run forward, an excitement to catch hold of you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. There are, some, there are some disappointments on here. And the Father says that this is the place of your, this is really the place of your, of your work. This is the place of your anointing. Jesus. Oof. I don't know if she's even on here anymore. Kia, are you even on here anymore? I, don't, I saw you on here. And I'm seeing you so clearly. clearly. Kia Pew, are you on here still? Are you on here? I don't know if she's on here. Jesus. Okay, you are. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm going to give her the word of the Lord, but this is if this is anybody else, I just need you to grab it. I just need you to hold it. Kia, the father says that the disappointment surrounding in your life, the disappointment surrounding babies. And I don't want to go, you know, give too much detail because I don't know if it's okay. The father says that this was the, the disappointment was really your appointment. The disappointment was really your appointment. The father says you have no idea what was accomplished in this pain. The father says, you have no idea what was accomplished in this pain. And so the disappointment caused a passion that really did produce life where you felt like there was no production of life. And this disappointment, the father says, is a legacy that will save 
much people alive. The Father says that in your disappointment around this area, what you put your hands on and who you put your hands on, it will last and it will keep on lasting. And it's going to save so many people because a passion was put in them. Esther raised Jesus, Vashti's son. Esther influenced Vashti's son. When Nehemiah got worried about the wall, it was Vashti's son who was the king. And because Esther had been his stepmother, he had a love for the Jews. The father says that even when you guys are long gone, the disappointment was an appointment for many. Because sometimes in our disappointment, we feel like, well, I can never have that or I can never get that. So this is always going to be here. And God says, not true. Not true. Woman of God, the Father says that there's a joy that is getting ready to come upon you. Uh, and I, don't, I, I hope it's okay if I go here and I say what I'm about to say. The Father says that over the past, the last couple of months, there was like feelings of melancholy and it almost felt like depression was trying to creep up on you. The Father says that I'm pulling you violently out of this season and I'm remantling you with another measure of your appointment of your appointment God says that this hole in you he's getting ready to fill it and you getting ready to run you getting ready to create something you getting ready to do something you never saw coming. And so where there was lack and where there was lackluster and where there was, you know, you, you were just in a fight and where there was deep, deep, deep measures of disappointment. It's almost like it cannot be articulated, the pain. God says, God says, I'm about to repay you in joy. I'm about to repay you in joy. And it's not going to make sense. And it's, but God says, I'm going to make you a testimony. And I'm going to push you out for other people who feel like they can't go on. God says, you're going to be a sign and a symbol that there is life. There is life. God says, who will care for the prisoner, the motherless, the orphan, and uh, the, the widow, the widow? God said, thank you for caring for the orphan. You did it to me. You really have no idea what you did. You have no idea what you did. You had no idea what you did. And you have no idea the calling on their lives. God says, thank you. Oof. God says, thank you. And God says that you are going to for a lot of other people who would overlook a set of people that God says, I care about. Everybody who was not, you know, the thought is people who are not, you know, raised by their, their biological parent is a deliverer. 
And God says there's a whole lot of deliverers out there that I need people to get their hands on. God says, thank you. You have no idea what you've done. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this house. Thank you for this woman. All of the pain. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know her that deeply. I mean, I know her, but I don't, you know, I don't know the, the story, story, her, her intimate story. <laughs> All of the pain that has been associated the emptiness. Thank you, God, that you have seen, you have answered. God says, you have no idea what you're getting ready to walk into, and it's going to be so good. It's almost as if God is giving you back decades of your life. And so, Father, we thank you for youth and vitality moving upon her body, her bones, her mind. Because there's so much work to do. There's so many things to do. God says, you've only touched the tip of how I'm going to use you, how I'm going to use your house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. He's amazing. He's amazing. So if you are like, you know, there's some disappointments in these, you know, you can't recover from, you can't. God says, that's not, not so. Not so. Not so. He says, if you hold on to me, if you hold on to my character, I'm getting ready to turn some things and restore some years. Because disappointment has a way of chipping away at your person, of chipping away at your, your, your standard of living. God says, I, I have a way of returning that. And so, Father, thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that for your people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So one last thing um, before we get off, and this is, um, I don't know what, what moment, I think this is an hour and a half. Okay. I'll tell her an hour and a half. So one last thing, and I would love if everybody, if you can, um, we have a thing on, and, and we'll be on Periscope tomorrow morning. Okay. So I said that. So we have a thing where if it's your birthday on Periscope, we like to prophesy and we like to decree over your birthday, your new year. We like to agree with God and release the word of the Lord and all of us do it. We type things in, you know, um, we do that on Periscope because, you know, your next year needs to be blessed, right? And it's a big deal. It's a big deal. So I don't know if you guys are familiar and I think most of you guys are familiar with I Need a Word. I Need a Word. So I Need a Word is turning to is turning to. And so, you know, I said that I would, you know, do a video talking about I need a word, but instead of just doing a video and talking about, we all know what I need a word does and we understand how encouraging it is. And certainly for people who don't know God or people who are just like, you know, in the moment, if you've never been in a place where you needed, you needed a word, but you didn't have nowhere to get it from. Listen, technology is amazing. So I need a word is turning to. So I wanted to take a moment so that we could decree and we could declare and we could bless this next year of I Need a Word, right? And so where you are, if you don't mind, just type it in so she can come back and she can capture the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophetic utterance over this next year, over this network where God is going to take this um, in the name of Jesus. And so type in, y'all know what to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for year number two of I Need a Word. We thank you, God, for what I Need a Word means to heaven. We thank you, God, for how you're using it. We thank you, God, for the strength or creativity of this thing. We thank you, God, for the caliber of the word. We thank you, God, for the idea. And God, we're asking that there will be a release of new and fresh ideas for the next two years. 
for the next three years. Allow there to be innovativeness that would settle upon Kwanda as she sets out to do your work. We are saying that there's going to be favor. We prophesy favor to go before this network. We prophesy favor to go before her. We thank you, God, for connecting and adding more networks. We thank you for adding different languages. We thank you. Come on, guys, type in what the, what the Lord is saying. We thank you, God, for adding strength. We thank you, God, for even connecting this to the secular setting. We know this is, I need a word. I need a word from heaven. I need a word. I need a word from Jesus, right? But God, we just thank you that in this next season that this is going to be connected to the secular setting. We thank you, God, that this will be a great evangelistic tool. God, we thank you that people will find you because of this network. We thank you, God, that people will find you and that they will receive Jesus because of this network. And so, God, where it has been great thus far for the past two years, thank you that you are setting a quanta up. You're setting this network up for major expansion for your glory. We thank you, God, for teams. We thank you, God, for people who can come alongside and that they will be just as innovative. They will be just as creative and it will be a team of people that can work together, who have the same mind, who think the same thing, who can pray, who can decree, and who can prophesy. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you for where you have already decided to take it. And we say Say that the word is immutable. Hallelujah. Concerning, I need a word. We thank you, God, that it is innumerable. The numbers that you will add, the places that you will take it, where it will be set up. Thank you that in the times of man, we have not seen this. In the times of humanity, we have not seen something such as this because of the technology. And so, God, we thank you that the I need a word will be a type of Solomon in the earth. It will be a type of Solomon that it will be said that that there was nothing like it before and there will be nothing like it so to speak after because it was the trailblazer for what it will come what will come after it thank you for wisdom upon the woman of god that's what we pray upon kwanda we pray the prayer of solomon that you would give her wisdom to judge you would give her wisdom to steer you would give her wisdom to maneuver such an endeavor as this increase her her creativity, increase her mind's capacity, increase her capacity to dream, increase her capacity to envision in the name of Jesus. And so we pray that she, she will move into the next phase with joy. May she always have joy with this thing. May this always give her joy. May, may her endeavor always give her joy. May it never become cumbersome. May it never weigh her down. But may it give her joy upon joy upon joy in the name of Jesus. And for every person who shall not be named, that she wants to come alongside and to help and to, and to open open doors for her. Thank you, God, for every, every seed that she sowed to open doors for other, that God, you will cause her to have the harvest of open doors unto her. May she sit at tables. Hallelujah. Where she uh, never thought that she would sit. May she sit at tables where people have had to work 20 and 30 years to get here. May she sit at the table in the next two, next three years in the name of Jesus. So we all bless the I Need a Word Network. We bless every channel that it will be on. We bless every Roku and uh, Amazon Prime and Apple TV and all of these other uh, platforms that it shall, may it always be quality, may it always be God, may it always be consecrated, may it always be consecrated. No matter where it is, may it always be consecrated. And so, Father, we say thank you for this network. Thank you for Kwanda. Thank you, God, for releasing heaven and the downloads of heaven upon her in the name of Jesus. So, Kwanda, we love you. Happy second birthday to I Need a Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, guys, I love you. We'll be on in the morning at 6 Eastern Standard Time. And full fledged people laugh. Angela laughs because we be crunk. And I can't. I can't pray with swag. I mean, I can't. I get excited about Jesus, and I go. I'm sorry. 
So we'll be full blown yelling, screaming, whatever. It is what it is at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Periscope. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. Best week ever. Good night. <laughs>